Throughout the many different Five Nights at Freddy's games, we always experience them from the perspective of the security guard, doing our best to monitor the animatronics and survive the night. But have you ever wondered what it is like for the children stuffed in the animatronics? Trapped inside the robotic suit while being watched over by a security guard only looking out for himself? Well today we are looking at Bondi's Barnyard, a FNAF fan game that was released on November 26th. This FNAF fan game explores the horrifying perspective of being a child stuffed in an animatronic. Using this unique concept allows this game to do a lot of interesting things, not only just gameplay wise, but also narratively, and has been one of the most enjoyable fan games I've checked out in a while. The game is also packed with a lot of content, such as 5 nights, a challenge mode, a custom night, and even some interesting extras. So if that sounds interesting to you, then join me as we look into Bondi's Barnyard, a FNAF fan game where you are the animatronic. As soon as we start the game, we are greeted by Bondi, who is a farmer animatronic and also the main mascot of Bondi's Barnyard. Upon pressing new game, we get our very first cutscene. We see a panning up shot of the animatronic that we are trapped inside. During this, we hear what I assume to be the owner of Bondi's Barnyard explaining how Ku the cow's purpose is to keep a child inside in order to keep them safe, in the event that a child is separated from their parents. We are then shown a newspaper detailing the disappearance of a child. A child's gone missing at Bondi's Barnyard on their own birthday. The child's mother filed a missing persons report to the local authorities. The restaurant claims no wrongdoing but have doubled their safety precautions and has employed a full-time security guard. Now this is where the first night of the game starts. And one thing I think is really cool about this game's nights is they are actually hours. So in universe, this game takes place in the span of one day, with each stage being one of those hours. It's a really cool idea and keeps the story more grounded as it wouldn't really make sense for the game to take place over multiple days. This also comes into play with one of the bonus modes titled Night Mode, where you must play through the entire game in one sitting as if it was taking place in real time. And if that doesn't sound too bad, trust me, these nights are long, and there's no chance in the world that I'm beating that mode. Anyways, in our office we have a door to our left and a door to our right. We are able to close these doors and also shine our light on them. Closing them however causes this percentage to go down much faster, and if this number reaches zero, we die. We are able to get this number up by clicking and holding on the animatronic's teeth towards the bottom of the screen to let our character breathe. Doing this while the doors are open will allow our percentage to go up, however doing it while the doors are closed will merely prevent the number from dropping as fast. Right in front of us is a security camera that is being controlled by the security guard. Kinda weird right? This is like the first FNAF fan game where we are actually trying to not die from the security guard. That is because every once in a while the camera will come up and point at us. We are able to see ourselves twitching on the screen in front of us, and during this animation we cannot click any buttons, as doing so will get us caught by the security guard and we will be shocked to death. There aren't any actual cameras present in the game, which is actually pretty cool as it makes us be aware of where the animatronics are in the building by only using our ears and what is right in front of us. During hour 1 we are tasked with surviving against the security guard as well as Grease the pig who will every once in a while make a snorting noise. This means that they are one step away from appearing at our left door. After hearing the snort, you will need to listen one more time for a shuffle noise before closing the door to get Grease the Pig to go away. While the door is closed, your percentage will go down, however once they bang on the door for the final time, you are given around 15% to your meter and you are now safe to open up the door. Now is also a good time to mention that before every night, instead of receiving a phone call like typical FNAF fan games, in this one we get a small riddle sung by one of the animatronics, giving us a clue on how to survive the next night. You are somewhere you're not meant to be, I guess you'll have to settle for the company of me. If the camera sees free saw, say she's, don't let them put you on your knees. This is a really unique way of informing the player of upcoming threats in my opinion, and works a lot better than just having text on screen before the night, as having a phone guy wouldn't make sense. After completing night 1, we get to see our very first cutscene of the game. 
Happy birthday, my child. For your gift, I'll let you go to Bondi's Barnyard. Hey, you look sharp as a sausage. I'm building a house. What material should I use for it? Bricks, of course. Thank you. The cutscene has an extremely cool art style, appearing as one of those poorly made children's games from the past. And during the cutscene, you are told to choose a material for the pig to build his house. And while I'm pretty sure this has no actual impact on the rest of the game, I felt very scared to pick the wrong option, as I didn't know if anything would happen to me. During hour 2 of the game titled Count Sheep, we now must go against Grease the Pig, the security guard, and now Forley the Sheep. The sheep behaves like Grease the Pig's counterpart, sharing the exact same gameplay only this time appearing in the right doorway. This night is pretty simple since the gameplay is very similar to the last, however it's a good calm before the storm to get you used to the flow and balancing of closing the doors while also finding time to open your mask and breathe. After night 2 concludes we once again get a cutscene of our duck character interacting with the cast of Bondi's barnyard. We get another prompt which we need to select an answer but once again I don't think this has any effect on the story. Hour 3 of the game is when the difficulty really starts to pick up. Now on top of all the other threats we need to avoid, we are now faced off against a withered version of Bondi. Bondi can appear in either the right or left doorway and instead of closing the door on him, we will need to hold the light to get him to go away. This adds a new level of difficulty as sometimes when trying to move quickly you can accidentally close the door on him which more often than not leads to your death. Bondi will also appear at very inconvenient times, forcing you to sit there shining your light at him while you also need to attend to other tasks, such as opening your mask or closing the opposite door. Another addition to Night 3 is Chickling, who behaves very much like Foxy does in FNAF 1. During random moments in the night, the TV screen will quickly change to display Chickling running towards your office. You must see which direction Chickley is coming from and close the appropriate door before they reach your office. It's not very difficult to stop Chickling from entering your office, however it adds yet another distraction during your night which can throw you off. I actually died quite a few times during this night, and I know it may sound like a pretty simple gameplay loop, but actually mastering the flow takes a bit of adjusting. After hour 3 is over is when the cutscenes start to take a darker turn, and also is when we find out the reason that Bondi is so afraid of the light. I got something here just for you. Blow out whenever you're ready! This cutscene really caught me off guard as all the other cutscenes before seem to be innocent introductions to all the characters. Using this unique way of showing us what happened to Bondi opposed to just telling us through exposition was really cool in my opinion, and helps add a lot of intrigue towards what happened at Bondi's barnyard, and what type of interactions our character had with the animatronics. During Night 4 there are no new animatronics added and we once again need to survive against the same threats, only this time they appear much more frequently. This means that you need to be on top of every single sound effect you hear and make sure you optimize the amount of time you have each door closed. After Night 4 is over, during the next cutscene we see Koo the Cow interacting with our main character. Koo the Cow promises to protect us and we are then shown another panning shot of the animatronic before Hour 5 kicks off. Hour 5, the final night in the game, also adds no new animatronics and instead chooses to survive as a last test to see if your skills are perfected. This night takes immense concentration to complete, especially when considering how long the nights last. After actually completing the final night though, we are shown the fifth and final cutscene. This one being a newspaper that reads, Missing child has been found deceased inside a restaurant that went lost. The child had somehow climbed inside a robotic mascot where it later suffocated to death early in the morning. Police are investigating the night guard that somehow didn't realize that the child was in the building, slowly dying throughout the night. 
Overall, I think this game did everything it set out to do perfectly, and is a golden example of how a FNAF fan game should be handled. An interesting style, unique story elements and gameplay, and a nice beginning and end, as well as many extras to hold you over for a few more hours. I thoroughly enjoyed my entire time with Bondi's Barnyard. I never felt like the gameplay was too difficult or too easy. Each animatronic added a fair amount of challenge which slowly built up into a very well balanced gameplay loop which keeps you on your toes but never feels impossible. The story being told during the mini games kept me engaged the entire time and had me wanting to see how it would conclude. After the game was all said and done, I felt very satisfied with the overall experience. If you guys enjoyed this video and haven't checked out the game for yourself yet, I seriously recommend it and challenge you all to try to complete the custom night. Anyways, that has been it for me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.